Welcome, everybody. This is Tony Ucita Velez. This is a live stream sponsored by Versprite, a cybersecurity consulting firm out of Atlanta. Again, my name is Tony Ucita Velez. I am the author of Risk Centric Threat Modeling. It's a threat modeling approach that's really focused on identifying what is the most uh, riskiest type of uh, attack patterns, threats that are really going to pose an impact to an organization's products, applications, et cetera. So just really quickly, since this is a live event, I want to cover it, dive into the good stuff. But um, I want to also uh, add some context in terms of how did this uh, methodology come about? Who am I? And uh, what's really the main goal and focus of this type of approach and methodology in threat modeling? So again, I'm Tony UV. I'm the CEO of Versprite. POSTA, Process for Attack Simulation and Threat Analysis, is a risk-centric threat modeling methodology. The process was developed by myself and a co-author um, from OWASP, uh, Marco Morana. We both are big-time OWASP uh, fellows. We have been involved with the organization in multiple respects over the past 10 years. POSTA is a threat modeling methodology that today is actually being taught in multiple different universities worldwide. We wrote a book in 2015 that was actually endorsed by the cybersecurity czar at the White House. Uh, most recently, uh, GitLab was um, noted to uh, take a look at PASTA and take it as a baseline for some of their threat modeling activities. And then we also were uh, included in a major automotive project to redefine uh, private key infrastructures for the EV vehicle market. Um, and some of the charging stations, and they were using the process for attack simulation and threat analysis. That's just 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 to name a few um, types of uh, industry backgrounds in terms of where pasta today is being used. But again, it's uh, referenced in multiple different respects in universities, government uh, agencies have also been using this. Uh, we've done a project with a uh, uh, three-letter agency that was looking for a more risk-based approach to how do you uh, incorporate security activities within your enterprise. So let's dive in today because this is really intended to be a quick dive into what is PASTA? What is this risk centric approach? Does it benefit me and how can I use it? So as you can see here, the acronym PASTA is truly a methodology. It's not a mnemonic. It's not a uh, threat categorization. It is a process, right? So process for attack, simulation and threat analysis. Uh, when Marco and I designed this uh, many years ago, uh, around 2012, before we wrote the book, we uh, focused on, uh, we're both very much risk nerds. So we, we, we as, as both uh, professionals in the information security uh, industry, uh, working for mul different multinational companies, we wanted to come up with a framework that was gonna, going to help to solidify on areas that were most important for remediation. Um, as we all know, in information security, there's a lot of data. There's a lot of information that we process from various disciplines, some of which you know, are, are noted you know, over here. Um, but the process for attack simulation is really meant to be about thinking adversarial, uh, in an adversarial fashion uh, against your applications. We want to be able to emulate what is the criminal intent to target a product, a service, an API, cloud infrastructure, you name it. Um, so that's why the word attack is in there, right? It's a really a different mindset of looking at your own product or application with more nefarious eyes. And the simulation is that aspect of it is really trying to simulate and trying to understand what intel can we leverage out there that attackers would use against us. And then the threat aspect, uh, we saw a great opportunity to be able to um, take better uh, threat context. You know, this is threat modeling. And oftentimes in other types of things that are dubbed threat modeling, there's a, a major absence of threat context. What is a threat? How likely is it to happen? Who is the threat actor? What are the means and ways that they will execute this threat? A lot of this context gets lost if you're maybe just using a threat categorization um, matrix that uh, almost programs you to just to think in one of six ways, et cetera. Um, and then, you know, a major thing that was missing when we developed this methodology was the analysis. Oftentimes, especially in US-based multinational companies, we get so tempted to use a tool to be able to solve our security problems. You know, it's land and scan and then grab information, create metrics, create reports. But oftentimes, 
it doesn't have the right context. There's a lot of false information in there. So we wanted a methodology that really fostered a lot of collaboration and analysis from all of its stakeholders. So if we look at you know, some of the activities that goes into threat modeling, I've tried to whiteboard it here you know, over my shoulder. Um, there's a lot of beneficial things to a risk-centric approach. The main goal with a risk-centric threat modeling uh, via PASTA is to let's not boil the ocean. Let's think about what is the most impactful thing to my product? How does my product make my organization money? Or how does my product not necessarily make my organization money, but helps the organization to execute better? It might be a backend application that you're looking to threat model. It might be a um, revenue generating application or product that you're looking to threat model. The intent here is to understand context of why should I care impact? What is truly risky for me as a product owner? Um, you know, and that factors in other variables in the risk equation like threat likelihood. What is the likelihood of some of the threats to actually occur? Are these threats that are coming from a standard that is static, that was maybe defined two, five, 10 years ago that I'm still using as a something that's a threat to my product or, or business? Or do I want to take a moment and get some intel, harvest that intel, funnel it into this process to create a more robust model? Um, we also, you know, obviously, want to understand what is the viability of these threats from occurring. This is where attacks come in. And attacks basically are the means and ways in which an adversary is going to be able to realize their threat goals. So I'll stop there to talk about some benefits out of the gate, just on you know, some of the things that were just mentioned. First of all, going to impact, you might notice the uh, abbreviation there, CIAC on the whiteboard. And what that means is if you want to do a quick mental exercise as you're you know, under trying to understand inherent impact of a product, you want to consider, does my product have a lot of sensitive data that I need to maintain confidential? You know, financial reporting, um, protected health information, intellectual property, source code, et cetera, the list goes on and on. And what would be the detrimental effects of that information being you know, um, out and in, in about and leaked out into the, into, um, you know, the, the open world. So we, we look and we, we think about what is the impact of confidentiality. We look at integrity. You know, if you think about financial systems, financial data, or health technology-based uh, applications and products, oftentimes there's practitioners and professionals in those respective industries and more that are actually needing high integrity in the data they consume from applications. So maybe integrity takes the lead over confidentiality um, in, in your product or application. And yet we come up to the A, which is availability. Um, this is a quick way, again, to use this acronym where you look at availability and you might be in the utility sector. You might have an application or product or a, um, you know, a system that is responsible for providing energy services to consumers, to businesses, et cetera. So continuity is king. Again, you start to look at the impact of your product in the bigger ecology of your system in terms of the business, right? And that last C that's added to the end, it might be um, unique to many of you that already know the CIAs of security, and that's confidential, uh, that is um, compliance. And that's really meant to enca encapsulate the legal aspects of what your product or service is actually inherently operating in. Are you managing data that is of high stake value to, um, for that basically could be affected by various state, federal, international laws? And what is the um, legal ramifications for some statutes not being met in terms of security, in terms of privacy? Right. And so you want to factor. This is one example where impact oftentimes doesn't really get the proper showtime in threat modeling, but it is a threat. Right. If something technical happens where trust is abused within an application and it relates to any one of the CIACs being undermined, then it actually could affect the product, the business unit and ultimately the business. Um, we look at some things, too, related to threats and attacks. The great thing about a risk-centric approach to threat modeling is that we, when, when, when it was developed, we looked at how can we get greater inclusion of security disciplines within an enterprise. Let's take pen testing. Oftentimes, pen testing 
is ordered or done internally. And when you're pen testing, oftentimes you go through a very standard methodology of discovery, fingerprinting, vulnerability identification, you go into exploit, uh, exploitation phase, you might have some OSINT at the front end of, of all this, you know, that goes along with fing fingerprinting and discovery. But it's generally, you know, determine what you find in the environment um, is determines what you're going to you be interested in exploiting as a pen tester, uh, potentially, you know, as a as an exploit, you know, developer, etc. Um, the difference here is that we want to think again uh, adversarially. We want to think we want, we want to think more like a nefarious actor. What is the motive for getting into a particular target product? Uh, you know, uh, application, service, et cetera, where we have a goal. You know, the goal might be persistence, as an example. Maybe I don't want to steal anything, but I want to reside within your infrastructure for free. I don't want to pay for anything. Maybe I want to extort you, um, which, by the way, extortion obviously has a great uh, and, and, and kind of a, a po uh, very common and, and highly utilized threat campaign going on for the past couple of years is oftentimes missed in other types of threat modeling, you know, um, categorization models, et cetera. So the, the, the PASTA process doesn't just look at software and the application. It looks at the entire stack. What are you running? And if you look at some of the things related to the attack surface, you know, the threat modeling process really is asking the question, what are we running in our environment? You know, what is the uh, third party software you see there, you know, SCA for software composition uh, analysis. There's activities that are listed in blue and purple um, here on the on the on the uh, on the whiteboard that you can include into as an input into your risk centric threat modeling process. What software am I running? What assets am I running virtually and physically um, that pertains to the environment that I want to protect that I want to threat model. So these are some examples where Threat modeling provides a phenomenal experience operationally for an organization to have greater collaboration with architecture, with risk management, with governance, with um, entities like a security operations center, with external partners that might be doing some application pen testing or network pen testing. Um, let me go back to the attack surface or the um, more of the pen testing um, use case. Uh, imagine you have a threat model, you define your threat library, you see the word libraries there defined, and you have a threat library, you have an attack library, you have a weakness library, and a countermeasure library. But let's say that you go to your pen tester and say, um, we've developed our own threat model, and these are the threats that would impact our business. They has an inherent risk to our organization or our product or our application stack. And we, these are the associated attacks that we've maybe built using KPEC using ATT ampersand CK as uh, industry uh, libraries that we have mapped to our custom built threat library. You can take that, give it to a pen testing outfit and say, please focus your time in trying to see the viability of these exploits. And so there it's, it become, it's, it's really helpful because your trusted pen testing outfit can go and maybe they'll have success with 50% of the abuse cases or the attack patterns that you've listed in your model. And that should elevate the risk likelihood and the concern, right? Uh, because you've mapped those threats to what is impactful to the organization, which ties back to the risk that you're actually trying to mitigate. At the end of the day, PASTA was created to not boil the ocean on security. There is an enormous amount of data with tools and service providers that are providing a wealth of information. But some of that information is too much. Some of that information isn't relevant. Some of that information actually isn't contextually uh, applicable to the attack surface for our application and product. So it's important to not boil the ocean, save time, have greater topicality of what is important in terms of all these things that are on the whiteboard so that we can, we can create custom threat models for the organization. I'll leave you with this. Um, one of the things that you know we oftentimes you know get as feedback with threat, those that have done threat modeling in different other fashions is time. You know, there's a lot of time. It seems to be a very laborious activity. And the good thing about Pasta, I invite you all to download the ebook that is available off FirstBright.com. But it's it's a it's a basically details of the the seven step process and what activities uh, go along with those seven stages. 
but you can take it just much like GitLab has recently done and take it to fit your needs, right? Um, you might begin a maturity model for adopting threat modeling. You know, it's not about going from zero to 60 all in one fell swoop. It's about being able to see what aspects of threat modeling are important to me. For example, um, you know, just at understanding the question, what am I running? What, what is my attack surface? You know, what am I actually running? What third party dependencies do I have? Not just leaving that question alone, but tying it back to, again, impact that actually I care about, right? And that's the risk centric approach because you first begin with like, what is my inherent business objective for this application product or service? What are the threats that are trying to undermine it? And what sort of components could bring the castle down? Right there, there's just one small facet of, in this case, stage two of PASTA that would be a wealth of information for engineers, architects. So I do wanna leave uh, with one particular, uh, I wanna share out this uh, brief slide here and it just, provides really a good holistic view on you know the stages for those of you that might not be as familiar and um, basically it this was a recent talk that we did at Versprite for a phenomenal conference called All Day Dev De DevOps and many of you out there are struggling to evolve from uh, just point in time assessments testing and more of inclusion of security much earlier in design and defining requirements just overall broadly in the uh, earlier in the SDLC and with different types of SDLC uh, methodologies that are out there. But PASTA, for those of you that may not know, has seven stages and each stage has different activities. And what you see underneath each of those uh, rectangle boxes is some of the relevant aspects that could be factored in or addressed as inputs. You know, uh, we look at, we, talk, we st spoke a little bit about, you know, the attack surface and technology enumeration, which is stage two. What, understanding my attack surfaces, what is that relevant to my product or application model? And then being able to understand and enumerate what are the respective uh, technologies that I'm actually using, um, client side, server side, mobile, et cetera, um, and that should be considered for my weakness analysis or vulnerability analysis in stage five. So this is a very linear process and there's a lot of constituents that are involved, um, but they're not all involved with equal amounts of time across you know, each stage. The great thing about you know, threat modeling in general, regardless of a risk-centric approach or not, is that it has a phenomenal opportunity to be uh, um, a process that establishes greater collaboration amongst architects, engineers, developers, security professionals, security champions, risk management professionals, governance. First stage in PASTA is defining a business objective. Some of uh, governance is to establish policies that the business needs to abide by. And there might be technical policy, uh, standards that crypto uh, standard, for example, that might need to be implemented, for example, for payment card security. And so um, these are some examples where you want to operationalize a lot of the great efforts that are done traditionally across multiple different security di disciplines uh, within you know, small and large organizations. And uh, we found that uh, the risk-centric approach of PASTA provides a uh, tasty form to really you know, incorporate all of the different disciplines that are important in running uh, good product security, good application security, uh, in a more cohesive manner and less adversarial. So uh, I appreciate this time and opportunity that I had. Uh, I'm gonna see if there's uh, any questions. I do again invite everyone to be able to check out um, the versebrite.com website. There is an ebook out there. And then in a couple of weeks, I'm actually gonna be uh, uh, having another live, more detailed uh, live stream. And it's gonna be cooking with pasta. It's going to be a, uh, an actual cooking show, if you will, where I want to be using uh, metaphorical representations for different ingredients in each and every stage of the process for attack simulation and threat analysis. So appreciate the opportunity and looking forward to catching up with you guys next time on a LinkedIn Live event. Thanks so much.